Welcome again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Mary anoints Jesus for his burial. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Now, we need to realize here, we just came back from the awesome story of Lazarus being risen from the dead. You know, he was dead four days. Jesus waited to come and and raise him from the dead. And when he did, what an awesome, awesome thing that was. I mean, a lot of people came to believe in Yeshua, uh, the Messiah, because of that. So we just came from that, and we're coming right into this story here. So let's continue. Verse 2. So they made him a supper there. Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Therefore, Mary took a pound of ointment of pure nard, very precious, and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. Now, let's again, we're not going to go through this too, too fast. We want to really absorb exactly what this is all about. We want to absorb the Word of God here, okay? And so, can you imagine being at the table, having supper with Lazarus after he was dead for four days? What an awesome supper that would be. And also, uh, here's Mary. Like, check, the scene was just amazing. The scene was just amazing here. We got Lazarus here at the table. He's been dead for four days. Jesus called him back from the dead. And also we got Mary here uh, and breaking a more like a, a vessel or a jar or a bottle of perfume to anoint Jesus with it. And it says it's a very, very precious perfume. Let's read what it says here. So uh, again, if you go back to verse 3 here, it says, Therefore Mary took a pound of ointment of pure nard. Now it says here in the notes, a Roman pound of 12 ounces or about 340 grams. So this is not a pound as an imperial pound as most people know, like, you know, 16 ounces. But this is more like an old-fashioned Roman pound, 12 ounces, okay? Wasn't even a full pound as we know it today, okay? And so it says it was very precious. So let's read on. It will tell us how precious this this particular ointment was. Verse 4. Then Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, one of his disciples who would betray him, said, Why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 denarii? Now here, there's a little side note here that says 300 denarii was about a year's wages for an agricultural laborer. That is very, very expensive perfume. Think about how much a year's wages is. How much is a year, a sa- like a, an annual salary for you, okay? How much is a year's wages for you? That's quite a bit. I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, you know, in today's value. It would be a lot of money, a year's wages of work. For just 12 ounces, this was very expensive perfume. So Judas, again, let's get back to the story. He said here, Why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Oh, you know, it sounds like he's a very thoughtful guy and a very good guy here. Let's read on. Verse 6. Now, he said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and having the money box used to steal what was put into it. Ah, okay. So Judas here was a thief. Not only was he a betrayer, he was a thief. No wonder Jesus called him a devil. Okay. He was a betrayer. He was a thief. He probably looked at that ointment and said, "Mm, you know, that's a year's wages, tens of thousands of dollars worth right here. I could take a good splice out of that. I could take, I could really take a good cut out of that and no one would know it, right? He was thinking about the money. He wasn't thinking about the poor. But Jesus said, leave her alone. She has kept this day for my burial. 
For you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me. A large crowd, therefore, of the Jews learned that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Well, I would be wanting to go too, just to see Lazarus after he was dead for four days, and now he's having supper. Now he's having a party, <laughs> okay? Wow, yeah, let's go see what this guy's, how this guy's doing, you know? Let's go interview him. But the chief priests conspired to put Lazarus to, to death also. What? The chief priests conspired to put Lazarus to death? Wait a second. He was dead, and, and, and he rose from the dead. These chief priests should be amazed, and, you know, they should be believing and, and coming to Yeshua and saying, you know, like everybody else was, truly you're the son of God. Truly you are the prophet, the prophet that Moses prophesied about you know, in the Torah. But instead, they wanted to kill him. Figure that out. And if we have people like this even today, you know, in the midst of really good preaching, in the midst of really good works, doing good works, you can't please everybody, you know? Even if you try your hardest, you know, you will learn that you can't please everybody. So what you need to do is don't try to, don't try to get... Um, acceptance from mere mortals, <laughs> men, okay? Let's try to get acceptance from God. Let's that, let, make that our goal. Acceptance from the Most High. That's all that matters, not mere mortals. Back here again at verse 10, but the chief priests conspired to put Lazarus to death also. Because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Jesus had, you know, three great witnesses, at least three great witnesses here, okay? He had the Father to witness for him. And time and time again, the Father spoke out of heaven, you know, behold, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, you know? Jesus had the Father as a witness, but he also had the works as a witness. Now, uh, I'm not saying this. Jesus said this. We just read this. Jesus said, if you don't believe, you know, for my sake only, believe because of the works. They testify. They witness about me, my works, the miracles that I do, the things that I do here, the good, the awesome good works that I do, they testify about me. But then we got something else, another great witness, and that is the scriptures, okay? Jesus pointed to the scriptures as well. Remember, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think that in them, you know, them alone, you have life, but they speak of me. What scripture was Jesus talking about? Of course, he was talking about all the scriptures, you know, all the scriptures that the Christians today call the Old Testament. They all speak of Jesus. I know a lot of Christians today, they would say, well, that's Old Testament. That's not New Testament. Oh, yeah? Well, that so-called Old Testament is full of the witness of Jesus. You want to know what Jesus was like? Read the Torah. Jesus obeyed the Torah. Jesus actually did more than obey the Torah. He was the living, breathing, human personification of the Torah. But some of you might say, well, the Torah is pretty harsh in a lot of things that it says. Well, yeah, Jesus was too, remember? You know, he did a lot of things. He condemned individuals, groups of people, and entire cities. Cursed entire cities. He very clearly implied or basically called a woman a dog and refused to heal her because of her nationality. What, how would that go over today if a preacher did that, if your pastor did that, or if a very famous Christian celebrity did that today, publicly? <laughs> boy, oh boy, I can just hear the terms, the charges against them already. So... My point is this, you need to have the Father behind you like Jesus did. You need to have the works behind you like Jesus did. 
and you need to have the scriptures behind you. Because some people, they just go, oh, well, you know, we just uh, we just go by the Spirit. We just go, we're just led by the Spirit. Close the Bible. We got enough of the Word. We just, we just want to, you know, just go by the Spirit now. That is not a good place to be in because everybody's got... I've seen people argue. One person who is considered to be an anointed preacher and another person who's considered to be an anointed preacher, and they both say they hear from the Spirit, and they both argue about what the Spirit says. It seems like almost every Christian nowadays, or at least most in charismatic Pentecostal, even in other many other denominations, claim to hear from the Spirit of God and claim to be led by the Spirit of God. In order to be led by the Spirit of God, you have to go by the Word of the Spirit, which is written in the pages of Scripture. Never forget that. So as you seek Him, always, always keep your mind in the Scriptures and always seek His face. Pray, keep your mind on the Lord. Call upon Him and He will show you great and mighty things. Thanks again for listening.